honor, adoration be to God Almighty for his wonderful blessings, love, compassion that he continues to demonstrate unto us. We bless his holy name for adding this wonderful day to our lives. And as you hear my voice this morning, that is by the grace of God that is added us to the living. Highly esteemed listeners, welcome to the Oracles of God Radio Broadcast, a biblical program that is run and sponsored by the Churches of Christ, which have come your way every Wednesday, same time, with a series of lessons from the theme. After the seed line war, what's next? The Bible, Jesus Christ, and rightly dividing the word of truth. Our purpose of doing this series is to help us identify the one and only Savior, Jesus Christ, and the efficacy of his testament that he has given to us. Another purpose is also to help us to appreciate the word of God as it is made up of books of about 66. And so, so far we've had a journey through the Bible trying to look at each book, its purpose, and in the time that it was written. We've come thus far uh, and the theme and the topic writing the Bible, the word of truth, and we've come to a point of the old and the new covenant distinction. We did say that there is vast difference between the old covenant and the new covenant. And this is also a very important topic because a covenant is an agreement between two or more people or groups. And therefore, it would just be naive on our part if we don't even know about the covenant at all. If we think that we are in the old covenant or it is a mixture of old and new, why is it something different would be unfortunate. Thank God he has given us his word that has emphatically told us the kind of covenant relationship that God has enacted with all mankind in this age. And that is the new covenant. We have looked at the old covenant, its purposes, and we have come to the new covenant. The last time we met, we tried to let the Bible speak for itself regarding the relationship or the comparison of the old new covenant with the old. The Bible has never missed worse, but I emphatically stated, and we read about seven better things that a new covenant has that the old has not. We learned that the new covenant is superior to the old by far because it has a better hope. According to Hebrews 7.19, it has a better covenant, Hebrews 7.22. It has better promises, Hebrews 8.6. The New Testament has better sacrifices, Hebrews 9.23. A better possession, Hebrews 10.34. A better resurrection, Hebrews 11.35, and a better blood offering, Hebrews 12.24. We did say that because of these better things, the New Testament law and covenant is by far superior to the old. Brethren, today we will continue expanding these better things. For we want to have it once and for all, and settle the matter. That the Bible has not been silent regarding which covenant we are under. Because it's important for us to know and identify. Because it will also pre-position us to be able to obey its conditions. For every covenant has its own conditions upon which the covenant is rested. And upon the satisfaction and fulfillment of the conditions, blessings from the covenants are received. So it is very important that we identify the kind of covenant we are under. And that is why the Bible has emphatically stated that the new covenant is superior to the old. Brethren, 
Let us look at point number one in expanding these better things. That a New Testament law and covenant is for all nations also makes it far superior to the old. We have learned from the old covenant that God enacted a covenant with only one nation. And that nation was the nation of Israel. God specifically told them that he was enacting that covenant as a, a sign between himself and the nation of Israel. In Mark chapter 16 verse 15, however, when the Son of God was initiating the new covenant, he sent his disciples to go into all the world and invite the entire human race to this new covenant. Those who were disciples to Christ were to be baptized, according to Matthew 28, 19 and 20. And therefore, go into all the world, and whoever will obey my gospel will be baptized. So the covenant is for all. It's a universal covenant. And that makes it superior to a covenant between God and one nation. A covenant between God and the whole universe is far superior to the covenant with God and just a nation. Brethren, therefore all those who will obey the gospel are part of the covenant, including the Gentiles. Because the Bible said in Galatians 3, 26 and 27, Galatians 3, 26 and 27, that there is neither Jew nor Gentile in Christ. But this can never be said about the whole covenant. It was purely Jewish. And therefore, even the Jews, when they go out and they come in, they ensure that they do what we call ablution. And wash their eyes and their nose and their mouth and every year. Perhaps they might have seen a Gentile. And it was an abomination to them. No thanks be to God. That we Gentiles have been united with a wonderful covenant together with the Jews. God has now appeared in his son Jesus Christ and has enacted a universal covenant relationship. So we will never, never allow ourselves to be under bondage of the old covenant that was supposed to be for a nation whose purpose was never for salvation. We've learned over and over again that we have a superior covenant today. Again, the New Testament law and covenant were dedicated with blood. Yes, it was dedicated by the sacrificial blood of the Son of God. 1 Corinthians 5, 7, Hebrews 10, 10, says so. In 1 Peter 1, 19, it emphasizes how precious the blood of Jesus is. And the New Testament was the kind of covenant that Jesus uses his precious blood to dedicate. Therefore, all those who come into covenant relationship with Jesus through obedience to the gospel come into a covenant that was dedicated by the blood of the incarnate Son of God. Hallelujah. So for the fact that the New Testament law and covenant were dedicated with blood and it's precious compared to the old covenant where the blood of bulls and goats were being used and would never take away sin, then we are blessed to have a superior covenant. Three, the New Testament law and covenant have the eternal offering of Jesus. And this one, we've discussed it once, and we want to discuss again. The eternity of Jesus' nature and the eternity of his sacrifice makes it far superior to the old. Why? Because he is our high priest, and aside that, the eternity of his sacrifice makes it efficacious for all those for all times. Jesus does not need to die over and over again. However, in the old covenant, because the blood of bulls and goats were weak, and could not take away sin, it was just a reminder that they were sinners, and they needed a savior. In the anticipation of the precious blood offering of Jesus Christ, every year they were continually doing the sacrifice. However, when it comes to the blood of Jesus, it has once and for all been done, 
and the eternal, eternal nature of it makes it superior to something that was temporary. And of course, you will agree that when something is eternal, then it's far superior to a temporal something. Who will not want to buy something that is durable? Who will not want to have some permanent something? Who will want to be engaged in marriage that will be temporary? Who will want to have temporary things? Of course, that is the reason why we are all looking forward to a permanent home in heaven. For our sojourn here is temporary. No one likes temporary things. And so when we talk of the eternal sacrifice of Jesus, we are talking of a far superior covenant by which that sacrifice was made. Highly esteemed listeners. Again, the New Testament law and covenant save to the utmost. And this is key, making it far superior to the old. It says to the utmost, the Hebrew writer stated in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. In Hebrews 7 25, Satan, therefore he is also able to save to the utmost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. In relation to the eternal sacrifice of Jesus, then comes the salvation aspect. Because he lives forever, he is able to save all who come to him forever. He is eternal. All human beings are temporal. And however, because Jesus is eternal, he is able to save all and even give them eternity. Hallelujah. This eternal salvation was missing under the old covenant. In fact, Salvation was just out. As we learned the other time, we realized that the old covenant was good for its purpose. We are not saying that it was not good. The laws were perfect and holy. But the purpose was not to save. Because under no circumstance will any man be able to live meritoriously perfect under law. So it was never in the mind of God, not even a twinkle, that it was given for man to be able to obey all the laws and be perfect and be saved. There were so many other reasons that we've learned why the old covenant was given. If it did anything, then sorry, salvation was totally out of the question. Then we asked for a better covenant and God has given to us through Jesus Christ and he says to the uttermost, making it far superior to the old. Brethren, again, the New Testament law and covenant offer justification. This is great news. The New Covenant offered justification, and it was never in the old. When we say justification, we are talking about the pronouncement. You are guilty, you are not guilty. And uh, when we say justification is in the New Covenant, it means that under the New Covenant, all those who come to the covenant relationship with God and in Jesus, the pronouncement to those people is, you are not guilty. Brethren, in Acts chapter 17, verse 30 and 31, it is firmly affirmed that God has entrusted all judgment to Jesus Christ, who will judge both the living and the dead. He has the power to declare guilty and not guilty. And he is the author and finisher of the new covenant of our faith. Hallelujah, therefore. And the Bible is saying that all those who come to him are justified. He says, you are not guilty. He says, all your sins that you committed, I have rolled it over. I have taken it over. I have blotted it out, never to be remembered again. You are not guilty. It is not just God, Jesus took over our sins. It is not just that he was made sin for us, but it is also that he justifies us. There is one thing being forgiven, and there is another thing being justified. Justification comes after forgiveness. After I have been forgiven, who am I? Then he says, you are not guilty. For yesterday's sin, today and forever, 
If only you will continue to work with me and come to me. Justification is a great thing. And it only appears under the new covenant. Under the old, there was nothing like justification. And so it made the new covenant far, far superior to the old. Brethren, again, the New Testament law and covenant are written on our hearts. Hallelujah. They are written on our hearts, not on tablets of stones. That the affection of the people were far away from. In the old covenant, a person could do whatever he liked, thinking that so far as two or more witnesses did not witness what he had done, then he was free. They were deceiving themselves, forgetting that we are worshipping God of spirits. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth, as Jesus later told them in John 4, 24, that all along God has been seeking for those who worship him in spirit and in truth for his spirit. So it doesn't matter whether somebody saw you or not. Since the act has been committed, God, who is omniscient, omnipresent, and omnipotent, is able to see all. And not only the seeing, but when we do anything, it should come from our hearts. The heart is the center of worship before God. And God likes those who worship Him from his, their heart. Irrespective of the location and time. That's the meaning of worshiping God in spirit and of course according to His direction. So in spirit means, it doesn't matter we have to move to Jerusalem to worship. It doesn't matter for people to see us and that we are giving. But when the thing is done from the heart, God who sees in spirit will reward us publicly. The spiritual aspect of God is that we need not to have a supervisor before we do right. We need not to do something to please others. But we do things out of our own conviction from our hearts. And we worship him in spirit and in truth. The New Testament laws and covenant were not written one, two, three on any stone. But because of the grace of God, we are compelled in and motivated in our hearts to obey all that God has asked us and even the more. Why? Because the grace that has appeared unto us is unimaginable. Highly unimaginable, and it has never come into mind. Our hearts are melted before Him, and He should be able to help us to be able to obey Him in all our endeavors as we move on. Brethren, this kind of covenant orientation is quite different from the old orientation. The orientation of the old are precepts, one by one. Bring two turtle doves. Then he comes with it. Then he thinks that after bringing the two turtle doves, it was a requirement of God. And so he has satisfied the law. He is holy. That was what they were thinking. Or bring one tenth of your goods, of your products, of your, so that we give to the Levites. And once the one tenth had been given, they were thinking that they had done what God required them to do. Without knowing that even the one term was not the exact one term as they did it. Without knowing that no, that was not even enough. That could not buy the salvation or forgiveness of sins that man was under. And they could beat their chests that they have fulfilled the requirement of the law by giving tithes. And it was unfortunate. And in the New Testament, that is not so. The orientation is not bring one, two, three, four. Law one, law two, no. The orientation is the law of grace and liberty. And that the Christ law is full of liberty and grace. So that by principles, we obey God in truth and in spirit. We are being motivated by the grace of God to do exceedingly beyond whatever we have thought. Through Christ who strengthens us. Amen. Brethren, so you see the orientations are different. 
and we should never mix the two. We should never think that God will confuse us by bringing both the old and the new together. No. The Bible has emphatically stated that God has enacted a new covenant of mankind. And this covenant is through His Son, Jesus Christ. And it is between God, the Godhead, and all mankind that will come to Him. Brethren, again, the New Testament law and covenant give an eternal inheritance. It gives an inher- eternal inheritance. Through Jesus, God has brought us forth unto an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away. Unquote. First Peter chapter 1 verse 4. First Peter 1 4. We have had an inheritance incorruptible and defiled and does not fade away. Hallelujah. Unlike this, in the Old Testament, they had inheritance of Canaan. And this Canaan was corruptible. In fact, the people that dwelt there were so corrupt that God had to drive them away. And even the Israelites who went to occupy the land also became corrupted. And even corrupted the land. Through killings, murders, pouring of innocent blood, doing all sorts of sin on that land. Corruptible. The land was able to be corrupted. Because the people living on it were corrupt. And so it was corruptible. The land could be taken away from their hands by their enemies. They were being fought all around from all angles. And so it could be taken away. In fact, it could fade away because the nutrients will no longer be yield them. Why? Because one time there was a famine. Repetitively farming had been the plot that a lot of people on the, on the earth. Farming and a whole lot of hazards that you can talk about. Because it was a physical possession that God gave to Abraham uh, uh, with the spiritual. But the spiritual has been given to all mankind through Jesus. The physical was what the Israelites had. How can you compare this? However, brethren, the possession that we have is heaven. And the heavenly possession cannot be corrupted. It cannot fade away. Neither can it be defiled. And that is what First Peter chapter 1 verse 4 says. And all these are the results of the new covenant relationship God has with all mankind. So it makes the new covenant far superior to the old. For even the reward, the possession, is far superior to that of old. You can't compare the land of Canaan to heaven. Will you? No. And so straightforward, it gives us upper hand. And being so lucky to be at this part of the covenant. Again, the New Testament law and covenant contains spiritual ordinances. It con- the covenants and the law contain spiritual ordinances. The words that Jesus spoke are spirit and life. For he said in John chapter 6, verse 63, Jesus said that the word that I speak, they are spirit, they are life. Hallelujah. Those who submit to the will of Jesus will reap the eternal life that he has promised to the obedient. Because the words are life, the word Jesus speaks is life and spirit. Whoever takes in that word becomes spiritual and lives forever. Simple as that. The words are spirit and life. So whoever takes in the word is spiritual and will live forever. Remember, it is by this same word that everything was created. It is by this same word, it is only the word that is real. All other things are not real. Remember, 
when God called our face to be from nowhere, as if they were, He used His words. The words are spiritual, they are real, and they are able to bring into fruition. And so when the word says that, let there be light, and there will be light, because the real thing is the word. All other things are not real. When we talk of reality, we are talking of God. We are talking of spirit. Whoever takes in the word of God becomes spiritual and shakable. Everything on this earth can be shaken, according to the book of Hebrews. There is only one thing that cannot be shaken, that is God. And God is spirit. And we see his spirit in his words. So when you imbibe the word of God, simple logic. When the whole world is shaken, when mountains move into sea, you shall not be shaken, for you are not alone, because you have imbibed the spirit, the eternity, the forever words in you. Praise be to God. And so the new covenant, Jesus said, a spirit and its life, the words, and so it's superior to the old. Where whenever one sinned, he had to be stoned to death. Brethren, last but not least for today, the New Testament law and covenant have been ordained by the Son of God. It has been ordained by the Son of God. According to Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Since they have been ordained by the Son of God, then we have faith in the fact that the Son can also deliver that which He promised to those who are in covenant relationship with Him. We are talking of the Son of God here. Who is God? We are talking about God the Almighty. So if there is a covenant that He has initiated, He has ordained it, then it's superior indeed. In the old covenant, yes, God made a, a covenant relationship with the people of Israel. However, he did it through angels. The Bible says emphatically that it was through angels, as we learned the other time, that that covenant was enacted. So the voice that was heard on Mount Sinai, etc., was through an angel of God. The mediator was Moses, a human being. But we are talking about a covenant relationship that God is the mediator to God. Wow! Is that not wonderful? That makes it superior. Because it means that you have a superior covenant whereby God did not send angels. If we read Hebrews, Philippians chapter 1, Philippians chapter 1, right from verse 2 downwards, it tells you that no angel could have done what Jesus did. God did not send an angel. So to who, of whom of the angels? To whom of the angels did he say, you are my son? Today I have begotten you. But to the son he said, oh God, thy scepter is established forever. So making a clear distinction between the angels and the son of God. What does that mean? Angels could never do this. In fact, the kind of covenant that we have is far superior that angels will not be used as immediators. However, in the old covenant, it was enacted through angels and through a human being. But we have God becoming a mediator for God, humbling himself as the Savior, Jesus Christ, to relate between God and man. And so there is no way one can compare the new covenant with the old. No. God has put forward on the table his last penny to save man. And that brought about the new covenant. So there's no way it could be compared with the old. No. The old covenant, as we've emphasized over and over again, was just a shadow of good things to come. Yes, great men cast their shadows. So the new covenant cast its shadow in the old, and they saw it like that. And the real is here. So why would we want to go back to the shadow? Do not be deceived. As I keep on saying, when the Bible is saying that Jesus has taken us from the power of bondage, then it includes the old covenant. It was a bondage. It brought division between man and man, between Jews and Gentiles. It was not meant to save. It exposed man as so weak and needed a savior. 
The old covenant made nothing perfect. Because the blood of bulls and goats could never make anything perfect. But we have Jesus Christ. The precious blood of Jesus making us perfect and justifying us. So we will never go back to that old covenant. Do not be deceived. It is true. That God has enacted a new and a better covenant relationship with mankind. It is written in our books. Brethren, if we know this, then we thank God for delivering us from the bondage. All along the struggles that Paul had with his contemporaries, if you include some of his apostles and the disciples, were the differences between the old and the new covenant. All along, read the pages of the new covenant, uh, New Testament from Acts. Romans and continue. The book of Romans, Galatians, etc. You will see Paul always arguing about the new and the old. Because man could not understand. And the devil is not happy. The man is being taken away from that bondage where always sin was before him. And once a sinner, always a sinner. Priding himself of law he could not obey. Always becoming so vulnerable to the devil. So the devil is so happy that people will love the whole covenant. And so he was even using some of the apostles and the disciples to fight against his remover. Oh, but thank God. God, Jesus had already removed it far away and thrown it away. He took away the first and replaced with the second. Hebrews 10, 9. And so we have a better covenant relationship with God. We have been delivered from the bondage of the old. We are new, and therefore new dawn has dawned on us. Let us therefore walk as such, as people that have renewed our mind, a newer covenant, renewal of Savior, renewed blood sprinkling, renewed terms of reference, all as if we never existed. Our all sins have been forgiven. And it goes with the old covenant that Jesus nailed on the cross according to Colossians 2, 13 to 16. Brethren, do not be deceived. When people go and pick a tooth from the old covenant for things that they think suits them because it will bring them money, it will bring them something and leave the rest, they are just not being faithful and they are doing this justice to themselves and their listeners. Remember, the Bible says that when a blind man leads a blind man, both shall fall in a pit. And so don't think that I was led by a blind man. Because the Bible is the mirror. And he's saying that he has opened our eyes that we are under a new covenant. When the Son of God sets you free, you are free indeed. Do not allow to be put under any bondage. And come and worship God in the new way that he has ordained that we should do. That is why we don't go after the old kind of worship. That's why we don't give under the old kind of giving titan. That's why we don't do things at the old one. That's why we don't sacrifice bulls and goats like the old. We are under a new. Praise be to God. A new sun, new dawn is with us. So, we should go according to the conditions of the new covenant. And the Lord Almighty shall bless us. God will next week, we shall continue. Stay really released. And stay really blessed in this new covenant relationship. Once again, this has been the Oracles of God radio broadcast. A biblical program that is run and sponsored by the Churches of Christ. Which come your way every Wednesday, 5.30 a.m. Make a date with them. Same time, God will next week. As God continues to unravel his prices, oracles. You are warmly invited to worship with churches of Christ all over the country. The pillar of truth where an adulterated word of God is shared and God is worshipped in spirit and in truth. You may want to contact us on 024-552-7658 or send us your message to coc.radio at yahoo.com. We are also located on Facebook at Church Radio. Facebook at Church Radio. We'll have wonderful discussion and continual series of lessons from there. God willing, we shall meet next week. I am your brother, Eric Darko. Now may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify us through and through. May our whole spirit, souls and bodies be kept unblemished and to see the new dawn of the new covenant and have a new relationship with our God and Savior for he has better things for us. Flee from the bandage of the old. 
and come to the new, to the Son of God, that you shall be free indeed. Amen and good morning.